Hello and welcome to another episode of How to Be a Great PC. Can I start off by saying thank you to everybody who's watched the first video, 2,000 views and counting. Uh, I have to say I'm blown away and I do hope that I can help in some way to help you have more fun and to really be a great player. Today we're looking at, uh, the GMs are busy looking at world building, which is how to create the space in which you're playing. The question I have for you is, how responsible are you for contributing to that world building? And the answer is, you're vital. The whole world is being built just for you to play in it. So that means as much effort as the GM is putting in to creating a fantastic world with all sorts of things or an amazing galaxy for you to explore, you need to be putting as much work into your character. And that means creating backstory. We're going to look at how to create backstory in this episode. There are six, six questions you should be asking yourself every time you create a character, regardless of system, regardless of setting. And those six questions, let me tell you, are asked by every scriptwriter who has ever written a good movie of every single one of their characters. What are they? Well, before we get there, your character's backstory is going to help the game master to shape the adventure that you're in. And if you're one of those people who go, oh, I, I, I don't really know how to tell a good story. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not creative. Guess what? You're a role player. By definition, you are. You maybe just don't know the right questions to ask. So these six questions are going to help you create your character. Now, we're not going to be going, this is how you fill in the number here and this is how you fill in the number there. The GMs watching my other channel all know that I do not care about numbers. And you shouldn't either. The numbers are there to help you to create tension and they're there to resolve issues and conflicts in a mathematical way. Your responsibility is to make sure that your story rings true. If your story rings true, you want to come back time and time again. There are players out there who like to come back because their numbers keep changing and getting bigger and better. That's fine. They're not role playing. They're playing a different kind of game. So how do you create a great backstory that's going to keep everybody going, how did this person do this? Well, here are those six questions that I promised you. Question number one, where was the character born? And bear with me here. These questions, you're going to be going, what does it matter where my Romulan commander was born? What does it matter where my dwarf was born? What does it matter where my Victorian female was born? Was it Dorset? Was it Essex? Who cares? That was 20 or 30 years ago. Well, creating backstory is about creating your history. And it allows you to already start interacting with your game master. So that very first question, where was the character born, has a whole lot of other questions that spawn around it to create a better character. Let's take, for example, we are going to role play in a Cthulhu game. I haven't used Cthulhu for a while. And you are going to be playing a Victorian female. That's all you've decided upon. You don't know what class you're going to be playing. You don't know what their focus is going to be on. It doesn't matter. You're going to tell yourself eventually what they're doing. So let's go to that first question. Where was she born? Was she born in London? Was she born perhaps in Ireland? Is she Irish? Or is she specifically British? If she's British and she was born in Ireland in the 1870s, let's ask our GM, hey, what was Ireland like during the 1870s in your world? The GM might go, well, gosh, um, I don't know. Then you say, well, I would like it if the Ireland in the 1870s had not been included in the British Empire. And there was not major tension between the Irish and the English. I would like it that the Irish, using their Celtic uh, ways and their powers of uh, the Fae, had managed to keep the English at bay and were in tune with the natural environment. Because then I can have my character born there, where she's a little bit more aware of the arcane. She goes to the fairy circles 
and she looks for leprechauns and that kind of thing because the environment she grew up in is, is a friendly environment. The GM might then say, well, that's fantastic. He runs off to create this amazing Irish kingdom that's managed to survive the incursions of the British, and you now have a starting point. On the other hand, you might say, uh, Game Master, what type of setting are we in? Is it a, it's Cthulhu, so it's supposed to be dark and morbid and gothic. So maybe she was born out in Dartmoor, out on the moors. This barren, frigid, swamp type of place. What are the implications of where she was born? Well, if she was born out in, say, Dartmoor, that means she probably has some understanding of how swamps work. Or she has a longing for big cities because there aren't any out there. Do you see what kind of questions get and what kind of answers just get thrown up by choosing where the character was born? What if she wasn't even born in England or in, in Ireland? What if she was born in India or in South Africa? How would that change the character and how would that change her story? Quite significantly. Because once you've decided how or where they were born, not how they were born, where they were born, you can then ask the next question. Who are their parents? Was she born in South America? If so, why were her parents in South America? And you don't necessarily need to follow any kind of logic. Or if you prefer, follow logic. Use your general knowledge rather than your imagination. Well, her parents were in South America because, A, in the 1870s, they were explorers. So was she born in a canoe on the Amazon? A canoe, by the way, is a special couple's canoe. So you can canoodle while you sail down the river. So was she born in a canoe in the Amazon jungle to explore her parents? Or were they missionaries? Was she born to a bunch of missionaries who were heading to South America to hunt down the mysterious demon of Quetzalcoatl? These are questions that you need to answer and that you need to take to your game master and say, hey, could I have demons wandering around from the ancient Aztec gods that uh, are really manifesting and causing problems? The game master might say, no, actually, I wanted to be very low key. I wanted to be are there demons or maybe they're not demons so i don't want it to be absolutely answered in the first session well then perhaps her parents were explorers and they were looking into temples and foreign artifacts which is where her love of the occult came from two questions so far and we already have several different types of character that have come out of different regions and have got parents that have got really interesting stories Next question, are the parents still alive? Does she have a brother? Does she have a sister? Does she have a grandmother? Does she have a grandfather? Again, why are we needing all of these questions? If she has a grandfather, he's probably not in uh, Brazil with the explorer father and mother. Maybe he lives out on the Scot Scottish Highlands. Maybe he is Russian. In which case, why did a Russian man marry an English woman? to give birth to her parents who then moved to England and then became explorers in the Amazon jungle. What was that chain? How did it happen? Is she related to the Tsar? Perhaps her grandfather was simply a carpenter. Then maybe she picked up some woodworking skills. Or perhaps she never knew who her grandparents were. She never knew who her parents were. She was raised an orphan in Brazil well, perhaps she was raised by missionaries. Someone must have raised her. Is she a Romulus and Remus? Was she raised by wolves? Yeah, speak to the gym about that, because that's a little bit fantastical. Maybe he accepts it. In which case, are we pulling a nail on the crowd? There was an old film from the 90s. Um, so asking those questions just get you some very interesting directions to look at her history and what could influence her so you haven't chosen yet her class or her career which leads us to the next question what was she doing before she became level one what was she doing before you committed her to paper 
So we know that her parents were missionaries in the Amazon jungle and they died mysteriously exploring a tomb. <laughs> what a cliche. Rather, her parents were explorers who perhaps brought back an artifact to England and a mysterious event occurred around that particular artifact which caused a monarch to suddenly wither and die, bringing her family into shame. So her parents have gone into exile and headed off deep into Antarctica to hide their shame, leaving her behind with her aunt, who owns a small villa in Italy. But the aunt prefers to we uh, summer it in England because it's nicer there than Italy in summer. Uh, but she has a house in London. And that is where our female character is when we start the adventure, when we start that very first adventure. Look at that long chain just made from building questions. How do we make the backstory a little bit more interesting? How do we avoid cliches? Well, just ask different questions. If you notice, I'll ask a question, I'll provide an answer, then I will provide a different answer and I'll weigh them up and go, well, I think this is more interesting. This is less likely to be predictable. So if she now lives with her strange aunt who winters in Italy and summers in England and has a house in London, is the aunt rich? Well, if she travels a lot, maybe she is. Is there an uncle involved? I don't think so necessarily because it kind of sounds quite nice to have this feisty old aunt who loves to be in London in the summer because she likes the rain and uh, who speaks Italian because she's an Italian for six months of the year, and she has brought up her niece in a similar style. So now we're starting to go, well, maybe the niece speaks lots of languages. She was born in Brazil in a canoe. She spends some of her time in Italy. She spends some of her time in England, and she has a Russian grandfather. So maybe she speaks Russian. Perhaps not. Let's carry on asking questions. We're only on question number three. I may have thrown in a bonus question there. So what was she doing before we started? Maybe she decided she should become a nurse so that she can solve the great mystery of why the monarch died when they touched the artifact that the parents brought back. The parents weren't affected by it, evidently. Maybe she wants to go and bring her parents back from exile. Maybe she wants to prove that her parents were not the villains who assassinated the monarch. Maybe she wants to forget the whole thing. I have nothing to do with adventuring or going off to exotic places. I want to be a librarian. Well, those are perfectly good answers too. The problem is when we get to the next question. Question number four. Four. Why did they leave? At what point did she say... You know what, this strange bunch of other people, because you're not necessarily going to be playing the campaign on your own, you will have other players who will have their characters, this strange bunch of people, if our GM throws us all in a prison cell in Uzbekistan, which didn't exist by that period, so let's say Transylvania, or Congo, why did she leave? Why did she stop? Why did she accept her fate and move on? Was she bored as a librarian? Was she unfulfilled as a green grocer? Were her experiments not going well and she was dismissed and so she had nothing else to do and decided that going off with this bunch of people was the best choice? So questions, questions leading to more, leading to more, leading to more. We still haven't decided on any of them yet. We've just kind of got them up then. We're going, well, this is kind of interesting. I like this aspect, this is kind of cool. So question four is why do they quit? And this is a tough one. Why would you resign from your current job or stop studying or actually get a job? What would motivate you? Is it a major life change? Is it literally someone walking into the inn that you're sitting in, having your little drink in the ladies section of the bar, please? This is 1877. And they catch your eye and they whisk you away because they're dashing or because they promise something different from what you have. So then we go to question five, and this helps you to create a more believable character in the future. So you are planning for future adventures, you're planning for future stories by creating a beautiful past. The decision to leave their job, their life, whatever, has ramifications. And the biggest ramification is, what did they leave behind? 
Did she leave her aunt in London mysteriously? Is her aunt searching for her? Is her aunt dead? Maybe. Maybe that's why she decided to leave. The aunt had a heart attack and the house was being sold. She had nowhere to go. So that stranger who offered her a trip to the deepest, darkest Congo is her only choice. What did she leave behind? Did she leave relatives? Did she leave her parents in Antarctica? Is the grandfather in Russia still there? Did she leave behind debt? Did she leave behind a lover? This allows the game master to go, <laughs> you said you left behind a lover? We are six months into the campaign and bang, there is your lover back to find you and he is angry. Or perhaps it's a she. And we've got this scandal going on because now you're this great adventurer and your female lover has shown up. What a scandal. So who or what did they leave behind? And again, don't just make the decision. Go to the game master and say, well, this is my story so far. What do you think? Can I leave something behind? Maybe there's an inheritance. If your game master is up to snuff, he should say, yes, 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 yes. Mm, let's tweak this slightly. Let's adjust that. And you need to be open to the game master adjusting things. Because remember, he's looking at what you're writing from a totally different perspective. He's looking at it from a, how can I take what I'm being given gratefully and change it up and make it so that even you don't know how your future is going to unfold? The last question to ask yourself is, what does your character want? Does this little quiet librarian, I seem to be stuck on the fact that she's a librarian, which is I hate, because that's an inspiration from a movie called The Mummy um, with Brendan Fraser in it, one of my favorite films of all time. So let's say that she became a nurse because she wants to solve the middle, the, the riddle of the object killing the monarch. She leaves this environment because she's been promised a journey on something like Let's say the HMS Beagle, to sail around the world and find exotic cures to amazing things. What does she want? Does she want to be reunited with her parents? Does she want to send money back to her aunt to say thank you for the decades of care that the aunt has bestowed upon her? Does she want to track down that Russian grandfather of hers? Perhaps she wants to return to Brazil to go and explore those ruins and find the true origin of the curse. You need to ask, what does she want? And the answer comes from all of the questions you've answered already. It's easy. Six questions. And now you've got this amazing character backstory. And when the GM says, OK, so what's your character's backstory? Well, she was born to parents who were explorers, and they were on a quest to go to Brazil and discover the temple of Quetzalcoatl. I was born in a canoe. And so my name is Elizabeth Co. after the guide, Branson. And that is a remarkable story already. But it goes on. Her parents found a temple. It was many days traveling. And her mother, whilst nursing me, had to carry the father's backpack. But they were a united couple. And they found this temple. And they struggled through it. And my father was killed. I've decided he died. But my mother carried on because she was devoted to my father. She came halfway across the world, had a child, and still carried on. She found the artifact. She took the artifact with the guide back to England. She presented it to the king. And the king mysteriously died. There was a chancellor who saw that it couldn't possibly have been this woman with a brand new baby being responsible. But they also couldn't let the assassination of the monarch go unanswered. So she was exiled to South Africa to go and live out on the mines that were being founded in the Boer Republic. The child was given to an aunt, a venerable ambassador to Italy on behalf of the English crown. Off she went to Italy, where she spent many days running through the dappled sunlight of forests in Naples, where her original origins seemed forgotten. But the aunt kept in contact with the mother, and of course, as time grew up, so Elizabeth 
had questions. And these questions later got her to be interested in what caused the death of the monarch. And the only way she could explore it was not becoming a doctor, because doctors in 1877 could not be women, but she could become a nurse. And that brought her as close to medical science as she could get. And every summer, when her aunt would go back to London, she would study at Guy's Hospital to try and better her knowledge and her understanding. Now that an opportunity has come up for her to sail around the world on the MS Beagle, she's going to take it because she wants to find that cure for what killed the monarch or the curse of what killed the monarch. Secretly, she's hoping that when the Beagle gets to Brazil, she'll hop off it and go and find that temple and be able to conduct real research. Or perhaps when the Beagle arrives in South Africa, she will travel north and go and see if she can get more answers out of her mother and convince her mother that she is not the evil woman that she thinks she is. There are so many possibilities for you to explore here that neither you nor your game master should get tired. Now, imagine if all the players around the table had as complex stories as yours. And it didn't take very much, let's be honest. Six questions, a little bit of history, a little bit of general knowledge, a little bit of common sense, and just a sprinkling of imagination allowed us to change our character from just being, uh, she's, uh, she's the healer of the party, so she's a medic. No, she isn't. She's a woman who has a very sad story. She grew up just with her aunt in a foreign language. She really wants to know what happened to her mother and what happened in the temple and why did the monarch die? And where is, is he still in his little canoe? So many questions, so many great story opportunities. And do you see now how you as the player have contributed to creating a world that everybody who plays in it is going to go, oh, this is amazing. There's so much history. This, this is real. And after all, isn't that what we want? We want to experience this amazing story of these amazing characters slowly coming to life, bringing to the uh, table these remarkable adventures that we could participate in. I hope you like this very long uh, exposition on why backstory is so important and how easy it is to create. It really is. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Share us with all your friends. There's lots of players out there who can always benefit from a little refresher or perhaps a different take on how to roll up characters. We've got plenty more planned, but drop your questions below. We will answer all of them. If you have suggestions for content that you really want to see, bring them to us. We'd love to answer them. In terms of actual character creation, filling in the numbers and that kind of thing, there are the GM channels out there that have got lots and lots of explanations on it. I'm not a numbers person. You can see that on all of our channels. Stick with me. We will make you a great PC. Until next time, happy playing.